Hi everyone, welcome to this next video. So in this one, I'm going to do a very quick one on multiplying and dividing decimals. Um, so come up in a paper one where you don't have a calculator. So I'm just going to go through some of the basics. Should be quite a quick video and should be recapping skills that you already know. Um, but I'm just going to teach you a couple of tricks um, and it might help you. So let's look at this first one. It would just say work out 4.2 times 11.6. So the first thing we can do is we can say, okay, roughly that's going to become 4 and let's call that 12. So we know our answer would be somewhere between 48-ish, it's going to be in the 40s somewhere, hopefully. So when we get our answer, whatever number we get, we need to make sure it looks a bit like that. So all you do is you get rid of that, and you just make that 42, and you get rid of that decimal, and you call that 116. So the sum you're actually doing is 116 times by 42. So if you set it out as column method, um, there is another way you can do it, and I'll show you that in a second as well. But column method, all you're doing, ignore the 4 for a minute, and just deal with the 2. So we do 2 times 6, which gives you 12. So you put your 2, and now I'm going to carry up the top here. The reason I'm carrying up here is because I'm going to need to use this space underneath. So 2 times 6 is 12. So you put your 2, carry the 1. Then you do 2 times 1, which is 2. And we've got this 1 that we need to add on, which gives me 3. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus your 1 gives you 3. And then we just do 2 times 2. Oh, sorry, 2 times 1, which is just 2. So we've dealt with that units column, we've dealt with that too. Now what I need to identify is that this actually, I'm going to do this 4 now, so I'm just do that in blue. So the 4 is actually 40, it's not just 4. So what we need to have is a placeholder, so we put a 0 there first of all. So that placeholder tells us we're now no longer working in our units column, we're working in the tens. So you do 4 times 6, which is 24, you put your 4 and we carry the 2, and again we're carrying up the top. Then I'm doing 4 times 1, which is 4, plus your 2 which gives you 6, and then 4 times 1, which is just 4, okay? So that would be your starting process for that. That would get you a mark. Okay, so from this point, what you now need to be able to do is you need to be able to add these together. So we're just working out the addition part for both of these. So 2 plus 0, let's do this in red, gives you 2. 3 plus 4, 7, and then you're going 2 plus 6, which is 8. And then obviously this last bit is 4 plus 0, which is just 4. So you get another mark here for getting the digits 4, 8, 7, 2 somewhere. So now what we need to identify is where does my decimal have to go back, okay? Now if you put your decimal there, you'd have 487.2. And let's go back to what we were saying here. It's going to be in and around 48, so that can't be right. So my decimal has to go there. That makes 48.72. Now the other way you can think about this is that in this sum, 0.6 is one decimal place, and 0.2 is one decimal place. So altogether, that's two decimal places, which means you must have two decimal places in your answer. So for your third mark, your final answer would be 48.72. Okay. Always double check yourself. As I say, it's a bit easier to carry your, your values up the top there than it is to carry them at the bottom. Now, the alternative method to doing this is you could use the grid method, which some of you might have seen. So where this and this become 42 and 116, I split the 42 into 40 and 2, and the 116 gets split into 100, 10, and 6. Now, if you're happy with the column method, you don't need to worry too much about this. You might want to skip this part of the video because you don't get yourself confused. But if you are happy, if you weren't sure in the column method and you think this might make more sense, then you can watch the way I do this one as well. So what I've done is split 42 into 40 and 2, and I've split 11.6, which actually is 116 we're using, into 110 and 6. And now what I'm going to do is basically just work all this out. So four, uh, sorry, 40 times 100 is the same as doing 4 times 1, and then there are three zeros, so I'll add my three zeros back on. Then I'm doing 40 times 10, which is four and then two zeros. Then I'm doing 40 times six, which is um, 240. Two times 100, 200. Two times 10, and two times six, which is 12. So all I've done <clears throat> to get those numbers, four times one is just four, put your three zeros back on. Four times one is four, put your two zeros back on. Four times six is 24, put one zero back on. Two times 100, 200. 2 times 10 is 20, 2 times 6 is 12. Once you've got all those, what you then need to do is add it all together. Okay? So you're doing 4,000 plus 400 plus 240. Be careful here. You want to make sure 
that you line up everything correctly. So you can see there, 4,400 will line up like that. 240 would go there. 200 will go there. 20 and 12. And so if I add all this together now, I get 12. So two, sorry. So zero, 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 and two. Four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then just four. So I still end up with a four, eight, seven, two. And your decimal goes back remembering because it has to be two decimal places. So that is just an alternative method you could use to um, solving these problems, okay? Uh, depending on how confident you feel about it. So there's two ways of doing it. Now let's look at the next one. We've got 0 0.8 times 17.4. Now, something to be aware of is when you're multiplying by a number less than one, so 0 0.8 is less than one, when you're doing that, it will make the answer smaller. OK, because it's like saying 80 percent of 17.4. It's not going to be as big as 17.4. So let's go through the process again. Instead of being 0 0.8, we're just going to call that 8. And instead of being 17.4, uh, we're going to call it 174. Now, I'm going to use this first method. I'm going to use the column method. So I'm effectively just doing 174 times by 8. So actually a little bit easier. So following my process, 8 times 4 is 32, so you put your 2, carry your 3. 8 times 7 is 56, plus your 3 is 59. 8 times 1 is 8, plus your 5 is 13. So I have 1,392. And again, I need to think about where my decimal would lie. So there's one decimal place in the question there, one decimal place in the question there. So I must have two decimal places which means my answer would become 13.92, okay? Remembering that the answer would be smaller than 17.4. So that's how you work with decimals. It doesn't matter if it's a zero point or if it was, say, um, if you had a sum like this, where it was like 16.4 times 3.72, okay? You change it to 164 and 372. But in this case, the answer would be slightly different because you got one decimal place, two decimal places there, so you need to have three after whatever digit you get, okay? Three decimal places at the end. So let's just look at a couple of other examples, but this time we're gonna look at dividing. So we've now got 24.6 divided by 0 0.3, okay? This is confusing because it's dividing by a number less than one. We're still gonna use a bus stop for division, but what we're gonna to need to make sure we do is turn this into a whole number first of all. We can't divide by a decimal, so we need to make this a whole number. So turn this into an integer, okay? Now, the way I'm gonna do that is by times it by 10, because if I do 0 0.3 times 10, I actually end up having three. If I'm times in that one by 10, you also need to then multiply this one by 10. So what you actually end up doing is 246 divided by three. If I do 24.6 divided by 0 0.3, that is the same as doing 246 divided by three. So using your bus stop, you put your three on the outside, 246, and you're looking at how many times does three go into two? Well, it doesn't go into two at all. So you then carry the two across. How many times does two go into 24? Well, uh, eight, nice that it goes into it perfectly. And there's nothing to carry across, so I don't carry anything, there's no remainder. And then how many times is three going to six? The answer is two. So that's 0 0.82. So the answer to 24.6 divided by 0 0.3 is actually 82. Okay. Remember, because you've times this by 10 and times this by 10, the sum stays the same effectively when you're dividing, okay? Because what you're doing to the right hand side is the same as what you're doing to the this side as well. So you will not need to change your answer here. 246 divided by 3 is the same as doing 24.6 divided by 0 0.3. Okay, so just remember when you're dividing with decimals, you just remove the um, decimals by, mold, uh, by making it an integer. Okay, last one then, you could just look at this example. It's a bit example one in context. So again, could come up in a paper one. It's asking you for area of the rectangle. So to find the area, you just do the width times by length. So you're doing 3.1 times 7.4 effectively. 
So that's what it's asking to do. And again, in context, all we're going to do is remove those numbers. We're going to follow our column method. We're going to do 1 times 4 first of all, which is 4. 1 times 7, which is 7. Placeholder for the next part. 3 times 4, which is 12, so 2 carry 1. 3 times 7, which is 21, plus your 1, 22. Add all this together, you end up with 22.94. And the reason it's going to be 22.94 is because there's one decimal place there, one decimal place there, so I've got to have two decimal places there. So the answer to this question would be 22.94 centimetres squared <clears throat> because it's to do with area. Again, double check yourself. If we call this 7, and if we call this 3, 7 times 3 would be 21. So we know our answer is going to be near 21, which makes sense. Okay. The only other type of question you might get is things to do with money. So they might ask you to work out um, some problems about money. And therefore, you just follow the same processes that we've done here. Just remember, take your decimals out and then put your decimals back in at the end. Okay. Hope you found it useful. Hope it helped you. I'll see you all in the next video.